For the past week, we've been working on round two on the heart, giving her new anti-fouling, polishing her top sights, and changing a through hole. Now we're back in the water and eating our last breakfast in Strömsta. We were so happy to leave the harbor and get out to the islands again. The wind direction is quite different from uh, the weather pro uh, forecast today. We have straight uh, headwinds and uh, quite much, but we can't see exactly how much because the wind instrument has uh, something has happened to it. It's, it's not working. But it's so short over to Kostar, uh, uh, the islands. It's only 1.6 nautical miles now when we come out in the strait here between. So we'll just motor over and go in between. Well, there is a sound um, between north and south Kostar, and there is the guest harbor where we will moor. so nice to be out on the water again. It's been uh, a lot of work on the hard with the boat, so time to relax a bit. But it's also nice that now the boat is really ship shape, everything is taken care of. And it looks like we're going to have really nice weather for the yeah, for the coming week. We're coming in here in the sound between the north and the south island of Costa. Looks beautiful here. Really green and lush. North Costa has around 100 people that live her year round today. And the legend says that the first settlers came here to escape the Black Death that was spreading on the mainland during the 14th century. We're on a path leading up to the old lighthouses here on the island. And it's so beautiful here. This time of the year is just the best. Everything is just exploding. The flowers and... It's so green. The yeah. colors are amazing. The chlorophyll is <laughs> exploding and the smell. Oh, uh, it smells of the lilacs, which is blossoming right now. Oh yeah, yeah. Now we're in the terrain. I wonder if we can go all the way up with the stroller. <laughs> I think this is as far as we go with the stroller. We carry Vera the last bit. Yeah, we have to look there. It's like uh, steps in the rock. And then I think we need some fake on the top. Definitely. Some new energy. Oi, oi, oi. 
Oi, now this is not possible <laughs> with the stroller. I mean, I sound like Are you out of breath? <laughs> <laughs> we are up on the top. Yeah, over there is Norway. Yeah. And over there we have Strömsta, the city where we've been. This is the best uh, bun I've ever tasted. It's with vanilla custard that I love, but then the bun is a cinnamon bun. So it's cinnamon bun with custard. Oh, oh I need to go. So there's two lighthouses here on Nordkosto and they were taken into um, service in 1849. But pretty soon they realized that they had put them too high up. So in clear weather they were mistaken for stars and when the weather was bad you couldn't see them at all. So a lot of ships were wrecked out here on the, on the islands because they couldn't see the lighthouses. So after some years it was decided that they should move these two lighthouses to the island of Ulsholmen, the place we visited some weeks ago. So you can see the two lighthouses on Ulsholmen out in the distance over there. And uh, yeah, they were taking over the service from the lighthouses here on Nordkosto. So the only thing left here are the actual towers and the top part is a replica. That they, I think they built that in 2003, just to yeah, show how it looked originally. It's summer! Oh, so happy! What a summer paradise this is. South Island now and we just took the dinghy over and now we're going to rent some bikes. Today it's uh, Mother's Day in Sweden and it's also Vera's name day. So some celebration this morning with some nice breakfast and now we're really excited to go biking and it will be the first time Vera sits in a not in a bicycle seat seat because that's what we have on board but uh, that she goes on a bike <laughs> they had so many bikes for rent. They were like I don't, over 100 bikes. At least. So I guess that's how many people have come here during summer. But today, there's like no people here. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, just go, Kelly. Let's see, let's see. 
We arrived to Coster Gardens, an organic garden and permaculture that have their own ecosystem. The restaurant uses homegrown ingredients and produce from nearby farms. salad with different leaves, lovage, pointed cabbage, lentils, beetroot puree and oyster mushrooms and it was delicious. We continued on our bikes and headed east to the village Ekenes. South Costa is much bigger than North Costa. The island has an area of 8 square kilometers. It has several villages and here you can also find a grocery store. For the little one, the bike ride was very soothing, so we stopped for a nap. One thing that is unique for South Costa, compared to the rest of the islands in the West Coast archipelago, is that the islanders used to combine fishing and farming for their livelihood. There's no cars on the island, they're not allowed, so it's perfect for riding a bike here. Only some uh, golf carts to look out for sometimes, and uh, these flatbed mopeds. <laughs> and it's super beautiful here. Let's look at this, these cliffs. What's going on? We're going to the beach, or at least the place where you can take a swim if you would like to. This beach is called Strand and lies in the northwest corner of the island. Vera jumped straight into the water, despite it being only 15 degrees Celsius. What a dreamy and relaxed day. It was just perfect. When we were at Usholmen in the south of the archipelago here, we met a man called Kenneth, who is born and raised here on the North Costa. And he's a real personality. He's Really adventurous spirit. He's uh, a fisherman. He's a carpenter or a lobster fisher fishing, and uh, he has a uh, road. Uh, he was the first to ever 
a row in a like open what's it called wooden open uh, boat around the whole Swedish coast from uh, Haparanda in the north of Sweden in Bottenviken on the east coast down south and up here he has his fishing boat over here and uh, his fishing hut and uh, he has this tradition that he collects uh, like road signs and put them up on the on his fishing hut we're walking over there now to meet him and he will show us this hut meet kenneth and his boat house He has a thought behind each sign and how he positions them. There are mostly Swedish signs, but many foreign as well, that he has been given from people visiting the island. Everything inside was so well organized. I love that. Så när min pappas morfar kom hit 1880 så köpte de ju, då fick vi en bitmark som hade sina kostnadsbådar och så var ballast. Så var det plocka in i bergskrivare i Strömstad. Holmen Grå var ett sådant ställe som de hade en depå. Det var ju krig, det var ju ett slag där nere va? Och då var det fullt med sådana här lite. De tog jag ett hus. Jag får också en riding av hus. Kenneth has been fishing for lobster since he was a teenager. And he's the fourth generation of lobster fishermen in his family. Thanks Kenneth for showing us your boat and boat house. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Please subscribe and join us on Patreon if you like our videos. See you next week.